Welcome to the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top leaders who share stories on how to successfully systemize a business. Now, let's get started with the show. Hello, Adi Clevit here with the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top entrepreneurs, founders, and thought leaders about systematizing a business. And this podcast is being brought to you by Business Success Consulting Group. At Business Success Consulting Group, we create custom processes and tailor-made business systems so businesses can grow and thrive. And with that, I'm very excited to announce, to introduce our, pod, our podcast guest today, which is Bob Paskins. And Bob is a sales consultant with a lot of experience in that area. And Bob and I are going to talk today about sales processes, about the strategy behind sales processes. And Bob has his own sales methodology that he developed, which is the growth matrix. And we're going to discuss that as well. So you are in for a treat. Hello, Bob. Thank you for being a guest today. Hello, Adi. Thank you very much. I feel privileged to be a part of your team. And I love what you're doing with all sorts of your processes work. I recommend you whenever I can. I know you do. We work together very well. So thank you very much. And um, so let's start by talking about the sales process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are a sales consultant, a lot of experience, helped a lot of uh, companies, many companies, entrepreneurs improve their sales process. I did a whole podcast about the importance of documenting your sales process and knowing what it is. So what is your take on having a good sales process? You know, I that's a great question to have. I, the first thing is all companies really need to have a good, I'll call it sales process because that's really the lane that I go in. You really have to have a good documenta- uh, documented process. And as you discussed in your podcast about the sales process, that's one of the ways that I think it's very important for companies to go in it when they come and they look at sales. So I really don't want to repeat that Instead, really what I'd like to focus on today is what I kind of call a sales strategy. And the sales strategy to me is very similar to the sales process. Because if I'm going in and I'm going to try to work and build my clientele base, which is what my goal is, both individually and how I try to help companies, they have to have a good process to be able to do that. And I kind of look at process as a much more all-encompassing word. So I would look at process as opposed to what is kind of their sales strategy that they do? What are their processes as regards to kind of those written guidelines that you do so well? What do their processes look like when it even comes to their automation system and tracking their numbers? And When we look at all of this together, that's kind of what this growth matrix is that I've created because it's a whole comprehensive view of a sales program. Right. So we, we, you know, we mentioned all these words, so let's clarify it because I like it. That's exactly what I wanted to do is to clarify the methodology. So in my other podcast, when I talked about a sales process, that's basically the documentation and the creation of a step-by-step actions to lead to the same result every single time. So it brings consistency. It makes things known how the sales needs to be done. It, it basically lets everybody in the organization and the different or the sales department know what their hat is, what they're supposed to do, and how they basically play together in order to get to the final result. <laughs> I actually mentioned that what I'm talking about does not, is not a substitute to the sales methodology or the sales strategy. And that's really what you are doing as a sales consultant is you bring in the different content or methodology and overall strategy that basically embraces the entire sales. uh, We can call it process, we can call it program, whatever it is, but basically selling, as you said, with the final result of actually increasing your number of customer, clients, patients, whatever your business is. Mm -hmm. So that is... The difference between the strategy and the process, that's what we are talking about, the process itself, but you have to have a strategy above it to figure out how you're going to get from point A to point B and then document how you get from point A to point B. So having a sales strategy is extremely important. Mm -hmm. 
So let's talk about the growth metrics because that's really the strategy. That's the overall umbrella of encompassing strategy of how you can increase sales. So walk us through the sales, the growth metrics. Yeah, I'll I'll do it uh, kind of briefly before I think we kind of hone in on one. But ultimately what the growth matrix does is it takes a look at the entire, what I call sales program of uh, a business or organization. And typically when you run into companies, you'll run into companies and they're gonna need help with sales. And basically what they like to do is they wanna pinpoint on one specific item, which could be, we just need more customers. You know, okay, that's great. We can look to try to get you more customers. Or, you know, maybe another one that I hear from a lot of my companies is we just need to get better leads. How can we get better leads so we can get customers? So that's kind of where they start. And what they're looking at, quite honestly, in my opinion, is too narrow of what their actual focus is. Uh, What they're looking for is to try to pinpoint one small piece of the the program, not the entire challenge that they might have with building a whole sales program or whole sales organization together. And that's what the growth matrix does. Because when I work with these clients and we'll use the one that really needed help with leads, basically, Yes, they needed help with leads, but their challenge was more than just needing help with needs. Their challenge was trying to figure out not only what the leads that they had, how they can use the leads that they have to build those out, as well as to get additional leads, as well as to figure out who who they should reach out to in the first place. And as I asked them these questions, their problem kind of grew from one little area to several areas. And ultimately, that's what the growth matrix does. Because companies come in and they think they have this one problem. And as we probe and we ask about this, we realize that one problem has led to something else that isn't quite right or something else that is missing from their business. So as we unwrap this, and what I have found with my 20 years is there has to be a whole overlook of the sales program itself. And that's what the growth matrix is because we can identify what the problem is, but it may not be the actual problem. It just might be a symptom to a larger problem. And that's what we want to solve. Absolutely. So walk us through the steps of the growth matrix. Yes. So basically, and I'll, I'll do this quickly, the growth matrix has six what I call components around growth. The goal is revenue growth and profitability, which is kind of in the middle. And so around that hub of growth, we have six kind of different aspects. So where we always start is what I call the motivation aspect. And what the motivation aspect looks like is what type of business are you? We start with something called our defining statements. And that is looking at really what type of business do you want to run? What is the actual product that you sell and why is it important to sell that out into the public? So that hits a lot of the ideas such as, you know, what is your core value system? What makes you, um, what makes you unique in the marketplace? And why do buyers buy from you? So we really take a look at that. Oh, I'll throw one other thing in there. What actual need do you solve? So we always have to start with that because that's kind of the foundation. Absolutely. That's like starting with the why, right? So you have your motivation, why. Yes. Really understanding makes total sense. So that's step number one. What's step number two? And then we go from there. And I love it. You're in that wonderful process mind. So from there, we go up one side, which is what I call uh, the discovery. So discovery is the next component. And discovery is basically figuring out what has made you successful in the past, who your ideal clients are, and how you can get more of those ideal clients. So when, you know, when I was mentioning that company who was coming to me for leads, that's where we started was in that discovery element is figuring out, going back, what made them successful in the first place? Who are their ideal clients? And how can we try to get more of those ideal clients to fit them so they can grow in that way? So 
that's basically discovery. If we move from then discovery, the next step in the uh, growth matrix, the next component is called tracking, which that point is basically what we're looking to do is we track what the, you know, kind of the sales strategies are. Are we following these sales strategies? We track the time. How are our people using the time? Are they actually using this prospecting time, this client acquisition time to their best of the abilities? And then we also look at their automated system. So once they get all of these clients, do they have a good database, a good CRM system, which is what a lot of companies do, and they put their prospects into this system? So now it can be everything from working it through the sales process to being able to reach out to people uh, if they didn't want to buy now, but they might want to buy six months from now, really tracking where these potential leads or potential clients could, could be. Yeah, and that's really important because you have to know that, right? I mean, you have to have a system that will help you do that because that's a big percentage of sales is being able to follow up and being able to take the lead all the way through the funnel, all the way to the end. And if you don't have a system like that to um, keep track of it, you're not going to be able to be successful. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And it's funny because when people say, and I'll go back to kind of the, the CRM model, do you have a CRM? 80 to 90% of companies say, yes, we do have the CRM. And then you ask the following question, how well utilized is the CRM by the people? And you just see their faces just drop because they have this great shiny CRM, which can do these wonderful things, but they aren't using it, Adi. Right. <laughs> so, I know that, Bob. Absolutely. I agree. That's part of the problem. I'm sure you see that all the time with your customers. They are proudly, here's our new CRM system. How's the data in the system? You know, and then you get the, the um, uh, wells, you know. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's the, it's the combination of the strategy. You have to strategize how to use the CRM. Otherwise, you know, it's just like the old saying is garbage in, garbage out. You know, you just like you put things in and you kind of like, and if you don't have a strategy of where to store it, how to use it, let's say you tag people or you add activities, but you don't see the overall big picture behind it. And you don't have a specific procedure or process or policy on how you're going to use it. Then it's just this expensive tool that is not being utilized. So I'm glad you brought that point up in terms yeah. of having the CRM. So, okay, good. So let's move through the growth metrics. Yes. Yeah. To know what's next. Yes, you will love what's next because what's next is what I call the development component. And the development component is all about having those written processes so people can understand where they're starting to go from there uh, when they get prospects. How do they turn the prospects into clients? So I call this basically the development is how are we developing our sales processes and then how are we developing our sales people to follow our sales processes. So this one is right in your alley and this is the work that you do so well is to make sure that they have these sales processes which are easily found, which can be easily teachable, which are in one source you know, and, and you can put these together so that the whole team is in sync going together on these processes. Absolutely. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, that's right on that up the alley there. So what are we doing with these actual sales processes and how are the salespeople using that? What's the sales culture like? That's all developing. It's developing the sales processes and the salespeople. Um, to achieve that desired growth. So uh, the fifth of the six components moving on is coaching because coaching is so important these days. Uh, I am a big believer. Well, shoot, I do it as a profession, so I better be a big believer. In <laughs> That's right. You have to sell yourself on that and you definitely know. But, you know, coaching is extremely important because it's the accountability. You know, it is the... Um, you know, it's like the the old cliche or I mean or the or the metaphor that we use so many times in terms of a personal trainer. 
you know, you can be very disciplined. Like for instance, I'm very disciplined. I can exercise off of videos or YouTube videos, or I have my, you know, my bike that has this big screen with it, with the online classes. But, you know, even myself that I am so disciplined, if I have something urgent or, or that I consider it's more urgent or that I don't feel like exercising, it's, it's the easiest way to not do it. But if I had a trainer that knocks on my door and shows up, I wouldn't cancel, I would be there, right? So it's the accountability part. That's part of coaching, but it's also coaching you. somebody that is on your team, achieving your goals, right? They have your best interest in mind. They are there um, ex- outside of the game, not inside the game. So they can see the moves. They can see what's going on. They give you advice. They guide you and you just need to do it. So I think that that is super important. I mean, both you have a mentor, I have a mentor, we all have coaches that we work with. And I think that having somebody on your side that can coach you through is extremely important. Yeah, I think you hit it right on the head. The two big things, you mentioned it. The first one is obviously having the accountability so that you have someone who is making sure that the people that they're coaching are continuing to develop in these steps. And then the second thing, which I think is huge, is if they provide that third party perspective, that second set of eyes and ears to really help people out. Because I'll I'll at least speak for me, I know I have specific blind spots. And with these blind spots, I can't see what is going on outside of these blind spots. And so I'm going along thinking everything is fine. But when you have someone who is set apart or maybe not as deep into the situation as you are to provide that third party perspective, they're able to really help you out to say, in my case, Bob, you've got this giant roadblock here, this giant blind spot. How are we addressing that? And that's what I find is so vital in the coaching component is that additional third party perspective of people wanting to help you achieve your goals by coaching you through what to do as well as things to avoid or things that you need to address along the way. Absolutely. I think it's great. You know, Bob, you really defined, you know, we started talking about a sales process and we talk about sales strategy, sales program, but it's basically the process of your strategy. You know, you have to have all those components in order to grow, in order to increase revenue. And all of them have to be in place and in sequential order so you can actually get the best out of the program and actually get the results, which is, again, leads new clients, new patients, new customers, whatever whatever right. it is that you need. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll hit the last component real quick. This is really quick. And that's what's called the achievement. And what achievement basically is, is making sure that you are actually hitting your goals. It's setting the goal and then making sure you are achieving that goal. Um, So that's the accountability part, right? In terms of. Yes, it's also that target because you can do all of these great things, Adi, but if you don't really have that target, that number that you are shooting for, it's you can be off course so quickly that way and so if you're able to have these goals and not only the goals that you might have say for three months or 12 months but let's take a look at what's going on say three years down the line you have to chart the course because that is a great way of tracking kind of where your progress is are you hitting the goals and are you going in the right direction to take your company forward I love it. I love it. I think you you just, you know, it's full circle. That's why you have it as a circle. You know, we started with the why, with your motivation, and we ended with achieving the goal, right? Mm-hmm. So that purpose is pushing you forward. And then it goes all the way to actually have that achievement and knowing that you actually met the goal. And of course, that's the celebration, the win. And then they, it starts all over again, because then you remind yourself what your purpose is and you continue with that cycle all over again. So that's fantastic. Bob, it's such a great explanation. And you know, you are, um, you're really a teacher. You love teaching people. You love imparting your knowledge and you have great tips that you send every Tuesday Yes, that I love listening to. And it just gives you those little, t- little tips that you can apply and use and gets you to look a little bit differently about sales. Mm-hmm. So if our listeners would like to subscribe to it, how do they do that? 
Yeah, the best way to do that is just to reach out to me through my website or my email. Let's put it this way. My email is simply bob at bobpaskins.com. So bob, B-O-B at Bob Paskins, which is P as in page, A-S-K-I-N-S dot com. They can visit my website as well and get to that. Uh, I would gladly put them on what I call my Sales Tip Tuesday list, uh, which is just a great, simple four minute, three to four minute video each week with a sales tip for you to be able to use and try to put into place. Um, so I really, really enjoy that. And then from there, that's a great way to try to engage with what my other consulting services are. You know, ID, what I like to do is just even when I have someone who's interested, just have a 30 to 40 minute sit down to figure out where they are and how I can best help them achieve their sales growth goals. That's fantastic. Thank you, Bob. So if you're interested, you're listening to us right now, definitely check out bobpaskins.com. Get on those tips on the tip list so you can get it every Tuesday. And if you're interested in this uh, very generous offer of a 30 minute cons- free consultation Bob, that Bob can do with you and walk you through the growth metrics, answer any questions, definitely take advantage of it. Bob, a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much for coming and sharing all that valuable information. Adi, thank you. I really enjoyed our conversation and I I just enjoy you as a person. So I'll say this to all of the listeners. If you're not working with Adi, you need to. She is just a jewel of an individual. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the System Simplified podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.